Oh, the... okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I would like to call this special meeting work session of the Board of Trustees of the Austin Public Library to order on Thursday, August 4th, 2022 at 5.07 p.m. And in attendance, we have Matthew Weiss, Karen LaRocca Fells, Cecilia Quintero, Althema, I'm having a hard, I don't see her, so it's hard. Goodson, Shandi Speller, Megan Hopak. Am I saying your name correctly? Thank you, Megan. And Kathy Byrne. And um, we also had um, Alice Joslow here. And um, and we also have in attendance, Mark Porterfield. So, oh, there they are, great. And Marilyn Reed and Bob Gabowski. So um, our next step is to have the Pledge of Allegiance. And Matt, would you like to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Okay, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for. Thank you, Matt. Um, in this work session, the first part is a little through and to go over the building assessment review, which um, so far is in three parts now. First, we had our meeting, then we had our first preliminary report, and then we had a revision to that report. So, um, I'm, is, would anyone from Lothrop like to say anything before we have the board speak? Board trustees, that is. You might be muted. Sorry about that. It's okay. <laughs> um, uh, no, I think we can go straight away to, you know, the board. Um, but, you know, unless somebody has specific questions, uh, I think it's best that the board uh, kind of leads the charge here. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Karen, do you want to um, go first with the uh, request that you made? Um, so as you all know, Molly and I went through the report and asked for a number of changes. Some of them were just typographical changes. Others were more substantive, mostly to do with um, placement, uh, potential placement of um, adjacencies and other areas. Um, some were correcting some um, parts that may have gotten lost in interpretation when folks were speaking with the, the Lothrop architects. Um, the Bob, Marilyn, and Mark were kind enough to make those changes. I had emailed the board a document that listed all those changes so that you could see what we were asking for. And um, Marilyn was able to get me the revised report yesterday. And I sent that all to you yesterday as well. So I haven't gotten a chance to go all the way through the report, um, but I'm seeing the changes so far that I requested, that Molly and I requested. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> um, let me see. I think um, at the meeting we had Shandi and, no, not Shandi, Althema and Matthew and I were there. And I haven't had a chance to go through the revisions or um, I don't know if either one of you want to say anything. I think for myself, I'm um, sorry for the changes. I would just love to know um, just in order of what's more important or what's most important and how we should tackle this um, just in your, uh, in your expert opinion. Okay, if I can just recap that, because I was having a hard time hearing you, Althema. You were saying you would like to know what is most important to be addressed, sort of a priority list? Yes, I'd like to know the priority list of what should be fixed, um, you know, just how it would work, in your opinion. Okay, thank you. Matt? I would just wanted to add that um, I felt this would be an appropriate time to look back um, a couple of years ago, we had a, uh, an architect report 
took the entire building, the Gatner Architects. And I felt that since we're approaching the time where we may be making a decision to have significant work done to the library and potentially go forward with a particularly large bond referendum, that it might be sensible to review the Gatner report in the context of whether there are areas that we should be add to this effort and coordinate Lothrop's efforts with what we thought would be a good plan. One of the things that came up in the conversation with Karen was moving the teams downstairs, but that involves some construction, that involves some technology upgrades, and this is the time to do it, I felt. So I think going forward that that's something that we might coordinate. And let me add, there are trustees who are not familiar with the DAPNA report because it's from 2019. So at the uh, next Bell meeting, um, hopefully Karen, Fry, or Karen and Molly can give uh, an overview um, by everybody with a refresher on what that report was about. Yeah, I, I'm in agreement. I think that um, there were some good ideas that we talked about at that time that I would love to sort of uh, incorporate into what we're talking about with loads up now. Thank you. Okay, who would like to uh, speak next? Alice? Kind of on um, information overload. Um, I agree with what both Althema and Matt have said. I'd like some prioritizing, and I think that Molly tried to do that as or Molly and Karen. Um, in the things that you said, you were sort of interested in um, organizing it and looking at stuff in terms of different organizing strategies. Um, and I don't know how to combine the Datner and this report either. So we have a lot of information, um, but I don't feel that I'm a qualified person to really um, put it all together. I need a little help with that. And there's a lot of implications. He, in addition, he referred to the HVAC report as well, consistently. So, that's I agree with Alice. I was ill at the last meeting, and when I was looking at the emails and looking at the videotape, I was um, really kind of scared by how many more things are now added to the list. And I'm particularly interested in hearing about, I guess, the order of, uh, of executing the plans and the projects here. And I guess uh, how many life safety bullet points are we dealing with now? Megan, any thoughts? Um, I don't have anything to add on top of what folks have said. I think I had a similar experience, wasn't able to make the meeting, but watching the video um, was feeling kind of alarmed uh, by what was shared. And um, I'm not familiar with the report that Matt referenced, um, but I can imagine that I would also be experiencing information overload if I was. So yeah, the things that folks have shared resonate with me. Thank you. Shandi, do you have anything you would like to add? No. Okay. Um, I, I, I did not read the revisions, um, didn't get a chance to. So I, and I really do want to look at that because I'm, really respectful of the work that you put into it. But the other thing I did is I also went back and I looked at the scope of services. 
And I think if I'm looking at the scope of services, what you did, the, um, the first step was the independent analysis of the building's architectural systems, mm -hmm. the purpose of identifying deficiencies, defects, deterioration, and necessary repairs and improvements, and then task one. And I think um, that, that was completed in your report, and this is very different than what the Datner report provided us, two completely different scopes of services. So combining the two is, as in what we have to do as trustees is quite a monumental task because it's like apples and oranges in a sense. Um, and um, this would be outside of your contract to do something like that if I'm reading the contract correctly. And what mm -hmm are committed to do for us. And so the next thing, the next step that you would have to do after, um, I guess, addressing the report is task two, which is, it says you're gonna prepare architectural written recommendations, and then you prioritize them as A, B, C, and D. And I was wondering if the architectural written recommendations, are those also drawings or is it another report? What is the format in which we would get this information? So those are my questions. I guess you've heard from everyone now, unless Kathy, okay. you wanna say something. <laughs> Great, all, all good comments and questions. So um, let's kind of handle them in reverse order. The report is a written document with photos that includes um, in a, in a uh, description of the methodologies, the findings, along with the recommendations in a prioritized manner already. Um, if it needs to be fleshed out in more detail, we're happy to do that. Drawings are not part of the uh, service. Um, they can easily be added, but it's more scope for you know more, more fee um so the other thing is uh the kind of combining the datner and lothrop efforts um we can also uh review the datner report and help you strategize common and separate paths to accomplishing both sets of recommendations So if someone could send us that, we're happy to review that and see where there are common uh, issues and where there are uh, separate and distinct issues. Thank you. As far as the yeah priorities go, um, if you look at uh, the second page of the report behind the cover page, the exit page one of the executive summary lists these three categories of work, uh, the first and highest priority are the health, health safety and code compliance issues because um, where there are health and life safety issues, it's really important to take care of those uh, pretty quickly. Um, the structural and mechanical needs are important, but they're not unsafe. Um, they just affect uh, the durability and, and weather tightness and uh, structural integrity and mechanical system efficiency. Um, they're important to do because, you know, if you've got a leaky roof, you want to deal with that. It's not a life safety issue, but if you don't take care of it, the infrastructure is going to suffer uh, in short order. Uh, and then the third category is kind of the desired uh, uh, kind of things we'd like to do or ought to do or should do if you have uh, time and, and budget available. And those kind of fall into two categories. Less important building infrastructure, um, like the windows aren't leaking, but they're hot. So either replace the glass with better glass or put better shades on them or put a window film on them. It's not a pressing, urgent life safety issue. Uh, it's more of a building functional issue so that um, human occupancy can be more comfortable. 
Uh, so there are things like that that make the building work better that aren't urgent. Uh, and then the other subcategory there is uh, how can the library function better by putting um, things and uh, functions in different places, uh, either in a big way or with kind of mild reorganization. Um, you know, for example, if the offices are in the wrong place and they need to be somewhere else for a variety of reasons, that's not urgent. Uh, it's not affecting, not in a very uh, measurable way anyway, kind of the ability for the staff to do their job. It would be better if the library offices were elsewhere so that adjacencies to other staff and and, and uh, location in the library are better suited to how libraries function today. So those are the three categories. Kind of must do, really urgent, life safety, ought to do soon because um, it's a, a building infrastructure issue, and then um, should do if you have time and money. Also, nothing under the structural issue is implies that there's anything in the building that's in imminent danger of collapse. There's no, so, no, you know, there's, the structural issues just deal with sort of, you know, building longevity issues and things like the roof that if they aren't dealt with will lead to further problems as the system continues to deteriorate. Now, we did not include we did not include anything in the OLA report directly in this report, but their HVAC stuff would probably fall into our category two. Thank you. I just want to, can I say something? I just want to point out, um, we only got this report yesterday night in the evening, and as I so I reread yesterday night the printed out report that I had, and I do see that you have significantly improved the first section of the report under executive summary as I opened it just now. So um, I do appreciate that you, you have responded to um, the stuff that Molly and Karen had very thoughtfully um, done, you know, asked of you. And, and that does help us very much in terms of you, you, you seem to have done the prioritizing that we had asked. Good. You know, we want to make it, we want to make it as understandable uh, right. for you so that the uh, um, a usable document, but right. consider it a living, breathing document that can, sure. um, you know, adjust over time. Of course, of course. And so, I, you know, I like to read things hard copy. <laughs> so, you know, and I got this in my email after eight o'clock last night. So I read the original report. And have not, as a lot of people said, had a chance to go through the new revised report. So, if it makes sense uh, to have you all read the report and then have us get together with you again, either virtually or in person, we're happy to do that. Because um, you might have other comments or questions that come up after reading it. Um, one of the th questions I have is. Um, libraries are no longer what they used to be 20 and 30 years ago or even 15 years ago when your library was built uh, and they've become more like community centers. Uh, how important does the reorganization of the library spaces matter to you and where does that fall in your priority list? You know, I understand you'll and, you know, admittedly say that the life safety issues are most important, but um, if the roof is not leaking, but is fluttering around and only held in place with loose pavers and ought to be replaced soon because that's kind of uh, a band-aid, 
the Band-Aid is working for now. And if you say that uh, more programmatic rearrangement is higher priority, then that's that's okay. And that's not a, a wrong decision because, you know, the roof could be made to work for some time going forward, for example. I think that's a very good point. I'm sorry. A very good point for us to consider. And I want to, um, is, are there libraries within the region that you also could recommend that we visit um, so that we can see some of the things that you just sort of referred to in terms of community? Sure. Yeah, no, we've worked on a lot of libraries in the region. So um, places like Larchmont Library or Hendrick Hudson Library um, are two that come to mind. Um, at Hendrick Hudson, we designed the new building over uh, you know, a period of time. And Jill Davis keeps coming to us with new projects to uh, kind of improve and expand and advance the library. Uh, so it's, it's, it was designed as a kind of open space that was flexible. So as new needs come online, having a flexible library that can ebb and flow with um, the, uh, the times is important. So that, that's a good one to go look at. Thank you. It's close by. Yes. Will do. And on the uh, mechanical side, even though our uh, agreement doesn't include mechanical analysis, because you already had OLA come in and do that, and they're the expert at that, uh, everything that we've done here in our analysis and recommendations has been, has took into careful consideration what Jim Dolan from OLA was recommending. And they have various options in their uh, set of recommendations uh, and intentionally because you know, th they didn't wanna make their recommendations hard and fast until they knew uh, what might happen architecturally in the library. Because if you have the offices now that are too hot, for example, why solve that problem in the office area and make it cooler appropriate for office use when the offices might move to another place and require um, some change to the ductwork distribution? So, you know, we've uh, kept an eye open and toward uh, the flexibility in their recommendations. Um, and I think the next step would be as you hone in on what the priorities are and a specific project or set of projects you'd like to proceed with, then uh, engaging both an architect and an engineer so that their efforts can be coordinated uh, instead of uh, separately is important. Whether you hire the architect and the engineer separately or not is not the issue. It's that when you hire someone to do something, make sure you're hiring the other to do the you know, uh, other components so that they, those two experts can collaborate and make sure that they're not um, at odds with one another. Thank you. So if, if anybody wants us to um, talk about a specific topic in the report, we're happy to do that now or if you want to wait till after you review it? I know I would like to review it. We just received it. I need to go through it. Okay. How is, how is the, we have several, we have this very comprehensive new report. We have the Datner report. What year was that, Matt? 19. What year was the OLA Jim Dolan report? Um, the update was 20, I think, or 21 maybe. 
21. So how are they all going to be meshed together? That was what my impression was that this effort would sort of do for us, right? Is to really give us a state of the state for everything together. Excuse me. Um, it sounds like several people said that they wanted to review the document before they spoke to our guest tonight. So it seems to me like that's what if that's what you would like to do, then we should do that and then come back to have another meeting with that discussion rather than bringing up other questions when if you said that you didn't read the document then and you wanted to, then maybe that's what we should do. Mm -hmm. I think also we need to be sure that Megan has is is introduced to both documents. I don't think you've seen either one, Megan, right? No, I don't believe I've seen the previous reports. Yeah. Well, then uh, I think it it makes sense for you to come back to us when you're ready to. Um, have a more in-depth discussion, and then we can get into the nitty-gritty. Anything we might say here is just going to be thrown at you, you know, fresh, and you, you might not have time to digest it. So. Mm -hmm. Also, it might Thank be helpful if, if we don't already have it, if you could send us the DATNA report so so we can look through it too and see you know where we uh, where the thinking is the same and where it diverges i'll go ahead and send that to you the datna report was all about adjacent seats um so i'll and and you'll see that when you receive it okay okay great and karen is there anything that you need from us in terms of the previous reports for anyone that doesn't have them um, what do you mean, Marilyn? I'm uh, sorry. The, the previous versions of like the the first report that we sent out, or or this, I'm, I just sent you the revision, but I don't know if you need the previous report that we sent out. Every I have both of those, so if anybody okay. needs it uh, needs it again, I can send it easily. Okay, no problem. I would love the updated report in the printed version that we had the original report personally, because this is like mo the most up to date and responded to um, Karen and Molly's concerns. Do we expect it to be significantly modified again? It, that's quite possible. You, you all are probably going to have questions and comments, but that's what it is. It's a living document. Yeah. So uh, either you can print it off at your end or we can send you printed bound copies, whatever you like. Are there sections of the revisions that are significantly revised like parts pages one through 10 or you know something along that line? Um, it well, really wouldn't be easy to just change, to just give you those sections. I mean, if, if you need printed copies, we should just print entire, um, you know, bound copies for you and have them sent to you. Because we also put page numbers on there. So when we, you know, uh, change some photographs. So yeah, it would be easier for us to just print you and, you know, bind new copies of the updated report and send it. Yeah. The changes had a ripple effect throughout the document. Yeah. Okay. I can. I would appreciate that, like Alice. In, in addition, okay. we made minor changes throughout the document that you know we saw things as we, you know, went, as we went back to the building to take additional photographs to fill in things that, you know, that we, you know, didn't have adequate photos of as the, you know, as the comments came in. Other things too. So some of that stuff is reflected in the report too. 
So I guess, Karen, how many would you like? Why, why don't I ask the trustees to email me if they would like a printed copy and I can send you that number. Does that make sense? Yeah, that works. Great. Okay, good. In the meantime, we'll await the DATNA report and then we'll start reviewing that and um, kind of putting together a summary of uh, where there are common themes and uh, recommendations that potentially collide with one another. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Also, you know, also, you know, take particular look at the, you know, the sort of list, the, pri the, sum, the sort of priority list on the first page because, you know, depending, you know, again, a lot of the structural things aren't things that necessarily have to be done right away, as Bob said. So as we develop a list of priorities, you know, there may be some programmatic issues that are more important than, let's say, fixing the roof. So, you know, ultimately, you know, we might juggle some things around as far as priorities, you know, as that happens, you know, as we, you know, get your input. Yep. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. So are you going to continue your meeting and we should depart or? Okay, I guess. <laughs> Or what? Bye. We're, Bye. We're talking Bye. about something completely different next. Okay. Bye. Thanks Bye. so much. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. So, thank you, everybody. And now we're moving on to. Uh, Karen received a request to use the theater and the parking lot by SNY TV. Yes, um, I went ahead and sent you the information that SNY TV sent to us um, about the request. Um, as you can see from reading it, they're requesting to use the theater to televise um, the Democratic primary de debate. The action, and it would just be televised. There would not be an, a live audience in the theater. Um, two issues with this request. One is that um, this is not a request being made by a nonprofit or government agency. And our policy as it currently stands only allows our rooms to be used for or requested for those purposes by those kinds of agencies. So I felt it was important for the board to review rather than for me to say yes or no. Um, the other issue is because of the fact that they are televising this, they need significant um, space at, at, in the parking lot. And they need the space in the parking lot and the theater for essentially the period of two days, um, a Tuesday and a Wednesday. We all know that the part, the theater is not really the issue as far as that goes. Um, the parking lot, of course, as you know, is. And what they are saying they need for their news vans is the, um, the, the part of the lower parking lot beyond the circle um, being and nearest to the bus lodge being roped off uh, for two days. And so you've received this request, and at this point, it's simply a request. It's not something that well, you need to respond to it, right? You haven't done that yet. Right. We, we let them know that the request falls outside of what I'm able to um, approve, and we let them know that I would be bringing it to your attention this evening. Okay. Can I ask a parking lot question? Sure. Um, would there still be accessible parking if they were utilizing that portion of the parking lot? If they're using only the part of the parking lot beyond the circle on the side of the Moose Lodge, all of the access 
acceptable parking spaces are on the other side. So those spaces would remain available. Okay, now I understand what part you're talking about. It's like the little end part. The little end part, yeah, where okay. the little garden, the little uh, teen, teen garden is. Yeah, 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 okay. I think the probably the biggest problem we have is our policy. <clears throat> because our, we are supposed to, um, groups that are governmental or nonprofit are the ones who are at this point um, able to use our facility. And this is a profit company, a profit corporation or company or news agency. Right. So we, the problem is, is we can't ignore our policy. And we've turned down other groups. Yeah, because we absolutely because, have. Yeah, because they're for profit. And at this point, I, I don't believe we have even discussed changing our policy again. And I don't know that uh, we're at a time when it's appropriate to do so. Right, we, have, we had discussed that we would like to revisit it um, and that we would like to consider other groups in the future, but I agree, Amanda, we are not at that point. Are we at all concerned about um, that part of the parking lot being able to deal with the weight of news vans? Um, I'm always concerned about that. <laughs> um, we, we do allow parking in those spots that are closest to the building. So, and we have had, as you will call, um, and Althema was instrumental in bringing this to us. We did have the, um, the FEMA, um, it wasn't a van, it was a, like a big um, truck that came to help people process claims. And they did, um, they were able to, use those parking spaces that are against the building. So we have had a similar thing happen in that regard. I think it's an unusual situation that the a public debate for uh, an upcoming election um, is having difficulty finding a home and is the policy something that, uh, I don't know what I'm trying to say here, do we think it's the right policy? And, or do we think that it's just convenient for us to say no to everybody? In other words, do we want to weigh the, the purpose or is it easier for us just to have that policy with the blanket? Um, it's, you know, I think when we decided on that policy, I don't necessarily think, or at least I didn't think, about um, a news outlet wanting to use the library. And one could argue that a public debate, even though it's being broadcast by a for-profit news outlet, um, would be for the public good because it has to do with a, an election of government officials. Um, so, and I think that's why, you know, it would have been very easy for me to just say, no, forget it. It doesn't fit into our policy. I think that's the reason why I was, um, eager, not eager, <laughs> why I brought it to the board. So what I'm getting at is if, if this were, um, live where we allowed arguments, say 50 people in the auditorium and they happen to broadcast this live um, debate with an audience would that change the consideration or it just still falls under um, a profit oriented company that we have a policy well i think that if um if for instance the league of women voters organized the debate and a news outlet came to to film it that would be easier to say yes to through our policy because the organizing organization is um a non-for-profit, but the intent is the same. The intent is the same, but who's sponsoring the debate? I'm not, I'm not aware. Um, it's not the cable company, is it? The way they made it sound, it was. Oh, I'm not suspicious about that. Okay, and then the policy is a policy. Yeah. I, I would stand by the policy. I agree. I mean, I feel like judging 
and given what the topic and what the event is for, I, um, you know, I think that we should allow them to do this. Um, you know, I feel like we should at a certain point maybe revisit our policy. But I think if we're talking about, you know, community involvement, what's more involved than exercising your right to vote, especially at a time like this? Um, and we're, you know, we're focusing heavily on our diversity plan. So I think that um, we should make a concession for them to, you know, just because it's about voting. And that's something I think important that people need to see. I, I think voting and having a debate about voting is really important, but it doesn't mean that we're the only place in town where they could have a debate. I'm concerned about other requests that the library has received to utilize the building, and we've basically said, no, you can't because of our policy. So how, when, you know, it's, we're saying to someone person, well, this is more important for the community than you are. And no, I don't think that's be what we're really thinking. important. We're, I mean, at certain point in times, policies change. You know what I mean? And then you adapt to the policy. So I think at this time, allow the, you know, everything is for, you know, I get what you're saying. And no, you know, no one wants to feel like their event wasn't good enough. But when we change our policy, we change our policy. You know, they're up for, they're always, you know, policies are up for revision. So we need to change the policy before we open the door, so to speak. Uh, my issue with this is that, um, first of all, SNY is a sports channel. And so I'm not really making a connection between um, a Democratic Party debate and a sports channel, as well as if you allow um, one party debate, then you have to allow all party debates. Hmm. And so then you can't pick and choose who you decide is going to come. So if the Communist Party comes and says, we want to have a, a, a debate at your library, which they could anyway, but I'm just saying, then, you know, you have to be, you know, equal in the way that you determine whether or not somebody um, is allowed to do it. Because this isn't just a, a debate about voting, it's a political party debate. Mm -hmm. So that's, I, I just don't have enough information about SNY TV. And what Democratic Party debate is it? That's a good question. The 17th District, uh, Sean Patrick Russell. And Alessandro Biaggi. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. I am now curious who's um, who's sort of sponsoring the debate because I I hadn't put together that that's the the sports network. And mm -hmm. it does seem from what you sent, Karen, that it is them putting it on, but I don't know. But maybe it's, I guess that would be why they're looking, they're the ones looking for a place. In the, in the explanation that I sent you that they sent me, um, they explained that Spectrum One News is the local cable news channel, um, part of the Charter Communication Spectrum Networks, and they air across New York State. And we don't even get Spectrum. He works for Capital Tonight, which focuses on politics in New York, the gentleman who's making a request. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think Spectrum is the closest that Spectrum is, is uh, Lower Westchester. Yonkers, Mount Vernon, Bronx. I don't know. I, again, I don't know exactly. Um, I also do want to say, you know, as far as as far as it goes with us, if we were to approve this, um, regardless of policy or, or not policy, I think that we would have to be aware that there would be a significant impact on the uh, folks' ability to use the library significantly more than we already have. <laughs> um, so I think that would have to be a consideration as well. We would, there are some big programs that we have on that Tuesday, um, on Tuesdays and um, Tuesdays and Wednesdays do tend to be heavier days during the week um, than some of the other days. Then I think it's an easy no. Like it doesn't sound like there's a compelling enough reason in terms of the connection like with the candidates with the debate with like and we already have limited use of the parking lot because of the spots that are blocked off plus our lovely neighbors um so it seems to me like the priority has to be like our programming and there being space for folks to to come in right like that plus the policy, I think, but I think the, the part that's most compelling to me is like, if we have programs that are big on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, like we want people to be able to come to them. And if that's already challenging, we don't wanna make it more challenging um, for something that we're kind of like, doesn't fit within our policy and doesn't really feel like it would be something that adds significantly to the work that we're doing. Does that resonate with anyone? Absolutely. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. Are they asking that the for access to the theater uh, space for extended hours beyond our normal schedule? Um, they're set, they would have they would want the theater space um, to be set up on Tuesday during regular library hours, but it would be inaccessible um, during on Tuesday. And then they say that they will be finished by closing on Wednesday. Um, I'm not sure how realistic that is, but that's what they are saying. Because if they just need like um, central command, just be set up with their equipment somewhere, there are a lot of places in town that get contacted by production companies to use the parking lot and to use access to, you know, um, meeting room and the bathrooms and, and a kitchen. I mean, um, Tr Trinity Church Campus was used by uh, Posse for one of their episodes and All Saints Church and um, there was another one, oh, the Presbyterian Church. That's kind of normal business in town. Mm -hmm. I think um, that's a good point that you've made because there are other places. that They make a donation when they want to use the property for these not-for-profits. Yeah. Actually, the Millwood Firehouse does the same thing. Okay. So and they have a lot of options. We're stretched. We're not really in a position to comfortably say yes, but there are other options. What's the matter, Megan? I'm agreeing with you, like, we're, we're stretched. I, I think I'm hearing from the group that this is a no. Am I correct? That's correct. Awesome. All right. I will get back to them. I'll have Jimmy get, he's been the contact. I'll have him get back to them tomorrow and let them know. Thank you. And I, I appreciate um, you allowing us to discuss it here. It's helpful to me. And, and maybe if you could give them a list of the other, some of the other places where people are holding yeah. these. Yeah, he had, he had made a, a few suggestions to them, but um, I, I will include some others. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you everybody. Mm -hmm. And so now it is time to take a motion to adjourn.
our work session. Alice, thank you. Megan, thank you for seconding. And so we are adjourned this session as of 5.56 p.m. <laughs>